Hello friends, I am Mohammad Tariq. I teach history and here I am going to take modern Indian history. As per the UPSC standard and UPSC pattern of last several years. Now today the first topic which I wanted to share with you as a part of continuation is Mahatma Gandhi's religious thought. Now often we start Gandhi's topic in our classes without knowing his two important thoughts. One is Gandhi's religious thought and another is Gandhi's political thought. Now, without knowing his thought, if a student is talking about Champaran Satyagraha, Ahmedabad, Kheda, Rollet Satyagra, Non-Cooperation Movement, Bardoli Satyagra, Civil Disobedience Movement or Quit India Movement, you would always struggle. And the kind of questions which UPSC is making nowadays is not like a straightforward question that describe and discuss, but they would probe why Gandhi decided to end Non-Cooperation Movement. What were the principles involved in that one? Now, many a time I found that the students as well as even media, common people do criticize Mahatma Gandhi on almost every decision which he had taken including partition of India. But that is because A, they don't have studied Gandhi, B, even those who have studied like many students actually have not studied these two important points. So first, <coughs> I would tell about his religious thought and how this topic you should prepare. What were the sources of his religious thought and what thoughts exactly he developed over a period of time, partly in South Africa, mainly in India. According to Gandhi himself, as we all know that he wrote my experiment with truth Hind Swaraj and series of articles in Young India as well as in the Harijan and in other several journals and newspapers of that time. So according to Gandhi's own admission, his parents had made deep impact in developing his religious thought. Bhagavad Gita was another important book and source for his religious thought. In fact, a very interesting development about Bhagavad Gita and Mahatma Gandhi I read in the book of Raj Mohan Gandhi that uh, when Gandhi was in England between 1888 to 1891 for his study of law, what happened that some Christian young men and women who were a member of Theosophical Society they gifted Bhagavad Gita to Gandhi in English. Now imagine, Christians in England, in English, giving Bhagavad Gita to a man who was a Hindu, who was himself a Vaishnavite, born and brought up in Gujarat. Now that is very interesting when you read. But when I started checking in my classes, I found that most Indian Muslims, most Indian Hindus actually do not know about their own holy books. This is generally kept in our shelves. So Gandhi started reading some other holy books also. One was Jain literature and it deeply influenced some of the thoughts of Mahatma Gandhi. Then he also read other religious literature. You all heard the famous line that you slap me in one cheek and I would be presenting my another one. If I ask you who said it, your answer would be, what you're thinking is wrong, not Gandhi. It was said by Jesus Christ in the chapter, the mountain of Bible. And Gandhi said, when I read this line in Bible, I immediately started loving Christianity. And all my doubts about Christianity, which he had perhaps in Gujarat, was actually over now. Now, <clears throat> what lessons he learned through which he is going to develop his thought, that is the point you have to now 
right in his religious thoughts and first important thought which he understood and developed truth is god and god is truth anything which is like absolute truth galaxies gravitation rotation death there is no doubt these are called absolute truth so it must have emanated from god anything which is emanated from god <clears throat> which came from god must be true this is what the first important point second important point for gandhi was that service to man and here i mean women also i mean mankind service to man is service to god now this is one important thing which he learned from his parents because his mother was almost a kind of social worker as you know that gandhi was son of mr karamchand gandhi and he was a diwan and his house was very big so more than 400 500 people would assemble any time and people of all faith and caste would come and stay his mother would take care sometimes she would wake up whole night to take care a sick women now gandhi as a growing child was obviously observing all these thing and it made a deep impact in his thought process this is what the point you have written service to god is service service to man is service to god another important part is soul force is more important than body force of a religion now what is soul force gandhi meant the soul force is truth the soul force is love the soul force is integrity the soul force is sympathy the soul force is empathy the soul force is justice etc these are all soul force of a religion what is body force the body force is temple mosque church gurudwara the body force are rituals which we practice every day as a hindu as a muslim as a sikh visiting holy places whether it is kashi or kaaba or any other holy places we think that by doing these rituals we have fulfilled our religious obligations for gandhi these are not important not only for gandhi if you check it bhakti saints of medieval time sufi saints of medieval time you would always find that for them and even buddha and vardhaman mahavira in ancient time they were not ritualistic people they believed here in these principle and actually the objective of religion according to most of the greats in history is this these are the means but we common people since not have the training and understanding so we think that if we follow all five time namaz and visit all four dhams and doing some of the you know aartis as well as offering to some chadar in the mazar we have fulfilled our religious duty forgetting that more important is what is your relationship with your parents with your brothers with your sisters with your husband with your wife with your neighbor with your fellow citizen and if your neighbor is in trouble suppose she or he is hungry and you are enjoying pizzas and burgers and yet you are going for hajj and kashi do you think that god would be pleased by your that act and he would ignore this act that your next neighbor was crying and you didn't help it that is the point where gandhi's religion would be different from common people's religion and soul force is more important 
than body force. Then, the fourth important point in Gandhi's religious thought is that different religion are different roots for the same destination. What does it mean? If I explain in my own way, suppose this is the destination of God or heaven, right? So one root comes through Buddhism, one through Jainism, one through Hinduism, one through Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Sikhism. I don't know where the atheist would go. Gandhi did not tell about it. Don't take it seriously. The point is, these are all different routes for the same destination. So, by this logic, if I ask you a question, two questions. One, would Gandhi encourage conversion from one faith to another faith? Based on this, that different religion or different route for the same destination, would Gandhi encourage conversion? I would say certainly not. What he said, if you are a Hindu, be a good Hindu. If you are a Muslim, be a good Muslim. The problem with modern Indian society is that we are neither good Muslims nor good Hindus, right? Now, second question is that, suppose somebody already converted for whatever reason, right? Would Gandhi object his or her conversion? Again, I would believe not because he or she had just changed the rule. Now, if you look at the issues which we have in our society, based on this, you can understand which act of modern day is going to be approved by Gandhi or disapproved by Gandhi. There was a question in general studies that the relevance of Mahatma Gandhi in 21st century. Now, if you apply these things and then you think whether Gandhi's thought are still relevant or not. Now, last important point is that the centrality of all religion, centrality of all religion is same. What in other words he wanted to say that only peripheries are different. The body is different, soul is same. So it hardly matters whether a person is following X religion and Y religion. As long as she or he is following the soul of the religion and that is why the conflict which we see today in Indian society and in neighboring country society on religion actually it is not because of the soul it is because of the body and since most common people do not understand or perhaps do not care about the soul so they fight like temple and mosque and church conflicts in history had always been for body. If you look at Guru Nanak and Chishti Nizamuddin Onya and Kabir and Farid and Namdev, many of them were contemporaries. They had great respect and regard for each other, but they never fought against each other because their interest was not clashing. They were not using religion for commercial purposes for political purposes, unlike what has become in many countries, including our countries. So the sole force of religion, if is important, then politics and religion cannot be separated. Because then Gandhi would say politics without religion is like body without soul. But that religion of Gandhi is hardly practiced by majority Indians. And that's the reason why Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose and Bhagat Singh and many other leaders felt that the religion which Mahatma Gandhi was talking and the religion which we practice are different. So it's better that religion and politics should be separated. And in 1940s, Gandhi also realized this. So he started telling in a different tone now, but not compromising his basic principle on religion that religious thought is not like you only apply in a temple and a mosque. It should be and it must be 24 into 7 in your life. So it is in your 
politics. So by that logic, if you see the if politics is based on this pure thought, no politicians can be corrupt, no politicians can be cruel, no politician can be biased, no politicians can think about ill will against the other community. That is the basis of Gandhian political thought, which he called Satyagara. And that Satyagara itself is designed on the basis of many of his religious thought, many of other political thoughts, which he derived partly from great thinkers like Thorio, you must have heard, like Ruskin, not Ruskin born, and Tolstoy, Leo Tolstoy. But more importantly, Gandhi had his own thought, we call it Gandhian. So Gandhi's own thought which developed over a period of time from South Africa to India, which he called experiments, learning from his own what is called trial and error basis and taking some of the beautiful lines and thoughts from some of the great contemporary thinkers. So that you would learn under Satyagraha. So I hope whatever we discuss in this brief session was clear to you. Thank you for watching and we'll meet in Vajiram for Indian history optional paper. Thank you.